little bits in me. Well, Hey, good morning and welcome to Talking Truth to Power. What's Nevada. so good about it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> welcome to another mediocre morning and <laughs> this is Talking Truth to Power. <laughs> That's Nevada's sound, Freedom Talk that's Radio. Like it. I'm your host, Brendan Trainer, and my co-host is Leland Fagri. And uh, what is it? Um, uh, nine days to the next election? Uh, do you mean in Georgia? <laughs> no, in April 6th. Oh! Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's the real election, yeah, isn't it? Right. That's when it counts, mm -hmm. at least for the presidency. And um, so I've, we've been... Uh, you know, people are uh, getting frustrated. There's going to be a major uh, march on Washington on April 6th, and I'm sure. And actually, the day before as well. Yeah, the day, on the fifth. They and sort the of sixth. set it up. Yeah. Big demonstrations, and mm -hmm. um, so the but the courts have been less than responsive. Um, you know, they say that the suits are either too little, too late. They're speculative, you know, and they won't uh, allow any of the people that sign these affidavits to testify and be cross-examined, which is what you have to do to really put an affidavit in the record. Or is it because they understand that there's a constitutional remedy that they don't have to get involved with? It could be. You mean they're waiting for April 6th? Yeah. Well, you know, the Constitution only says January 20th. Um, is the yeah, last it's, it's, is the day when right. he's inaugurated. It's mm -hmm. possible that it could go beyond right. April six. Could go right up to, to the inauguration day itself. Right. Yeah. So um, one of the Wisconsin uh, Supreme Court, uh, no, the Seventh Circuit, uh, dealing yeah. with one of the lawsuits in Wisconsin, said that the phrase "manner of election by the legislature" is not as the Republican suit contends that, in other words, that the legislatures don't have to approve every change in procedure. Instead, the clause can be satisfied merely by specifying that it must be decided by an election, because apparently in the past some states chose their electors through the legislature before, you know, mm -hmm. we had uh, what we have today. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that holds up, but at any way, uh, like I, I I, we were listening, uh, it was being brought, uh, broadcast live, the uh, Georgia Senate uh, Committee on the Election. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, people were presenting some pretty, now that's the state that had the video, too. Of the, of the, A lot of video, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of, of um, you know, the uh, Election Commission people telling the observers they could leave and then after they'd left they pulled out some more boxes of ballots and ran them through the machine and uh, so that state uh, is appears to be and that's the one with the new election coming up and the secretary of state what's his name Raffensperger 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 almost sounds I'm not sure what that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Ben Roethlisberger the <laughs> quarterback of the Steelers but anyway they said that He's going to take measures to ensure the integrity of the uh, special election. But well, there was a before you move on. There was mm -hmm. a Georgia County official this morning at that hearing who testified that uh, Raffensperger sent armed Secretary of State agents with handcuffs to the county after they complained about the inaccurate Dominion machines. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of mischief down there in Georgia. Is that is Georgia part of the United States of America? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so far in the caucuses it's so far in the somewhere, south. you know. <laughs> but uh, the uh, I heard the one witness who sounded very authoritative. He's been in the computer analysis business and uh, for you know decades. He said the problem is the paper ballots themselves, and he demonstrated ways mm -hmm. that you uh, could make it. Uh, first of all, he demonstrated that every when you mark off the the oval, you know, to check for right. the candidate, mm -hmm. that every uh, every one of these uh, ballpoint pens leaves a certain signature, and when you press down on the ballpoint pen and then move it around to fill in the oval, it leaves a few little white streaks because the pen doesn't reach everything that mm -hmm. you can see with a microscope or whatever, and 
on the contrary, if it was printed by machine, it would be a uniform blot with only a few little specks in there, but basically just a blot. I see. And so uh, he said if the, he got $500,000, <laughs> I think that's what he said, he could audit all the paper ballots in about two hours by running them through his, you know, auditing machine. So by dinner we'd know. By dinner we'd know, exactly. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll authorize it. Well, Trump has called for uh, Brian Kemp to resign again this right. morning. It's heating up. This oh, yeah. It's clearly heating up, and next Wednesday is going to be a lot of fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we'll be here in the middle of it. Yes. So We'll be right here broadcasting. Here's what I'm going to suggest that our listeners have one television set set for whatever's going on there. Contemporary. Yeah, uh, right. And then, and then be listening to us, of course. Of course, because we are the the real interpreters of what's going on. Yeah, this is this is ground zero here. <laughs> so we will see. And, and then Nevada did. I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, a writer for the Las Vegas Review Journal, uh, Koenig, uh, J. Uh, oh gosh, I don't have it. I was. I know the guy you're talking about. Yeah, he did a little experiment where he got nine of his friends together with mail-in ballots and he signed in his own handwriting the envelope mm -hmm. and they signed the actual ballot mm -hmm. and eight of the nine went through. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what uh, has been of most concern here in Nevada all along. Yeah. Um, Laxalt has been documenting all this stuff and so it really has to be, that case has to be made mm -hmm. and it hasn't publicly been understood to be so mischievous mm -hmm. here to four. Right. So uh, we can only wait and see, but uh, we'll, we'll be back with some more election news. When are we going to do that? Right after oh, the right break. after the break? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Patterson. I'm the founder and owner of Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists. In Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists, we take a comprehensive approach to treating patients with chronic pain in the greater... This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. want to talk on the air text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266 now back to the show welcome back this is talking truth to power i'm your host brendan trainer and my co-host leland fagri so many are saying that on wednesday that um michael pence when he opens uh has the most powerful job in the country mm -hmm. Because he, the Twelfth Amendment, which was ratified in 1804, says the president, uh, all right, they will take the list, talks about uh, counting the list, and they will send and sign and certify and transmit seal to the seat of the government of the United States. Now, the thing is that these lists are the list of the electors, and there are going to be six or seven states that are going to have alternate lists. Uh, as a, two as slates of two slates of electors, electors yes. right? So the president of the Senate shall, in the presence of the Senate and House of Representatives, open all the certificates, and the vote shall then be counted. And that the person having the greatest number of votes shall be president. So that is the actual election, and people are saying that it is up to Mike Pence alone, <laughs> basically, to decide which slate of electors will be chosen. I wonder which one, if that's the case, I wonder which <laughs> one he would choose. But wait, Thomas Jefferson pulled this trick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 1800 presidential election was a contest between Jefferson, Aaron Burr, John Adams, Charles Pinckney, and John Jay. Jefferson, as the current vice president, was the president of the Senate in Pence's role. Mm -hmm. And when it came time to count the votes, he counted them in his own favor. <laughs> <laughs> J. 
Gee, we missed out on President Pinckney. And according to uh, a certain, ac- <laughs> certain accounts, uh, Jefferson failed to pause before counting Georgia's four electoral votes into the Republic, uh, Republican column, declaring the final vote as if nothing were amiss. <laughs> Had Georgia's ballot been excluded, the vote count would have admitted all five candidates into a runoff in the House. Boy, wouldn't that be something, huh? Mm-hmm. Without the decisive use of his power as president of the Senate, Jefferson might never have become president of the United States. Oh, gosh. we All our textbooks would have to have been re- rewritten. <laughs> to rethink everything. <laughs> Bill of Rights, everything. <laughs> So uh, so it's not unprecedented. By the way, the 12th Amendment was ratified in 1804. That was after his presidency. Just four years after. Yeah. Uh, probably as a repercussion of mm-hmm. what had happened. There. What, he, what he did. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, well, you know, we, we know that the uh, election went to the House of Representatives with the first time Andrew Jackson ran for president. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was... Uh, Caused a big uproar when Jackson was not chosen, and uh, instead uh, John Quincy Adams was chosen, and uh, Jackson used it to propel himself to the presidency in 1830. Now, um, I imagine that if Pence does that, uh, there will be somewhat of an uproar. There is going to be a response, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I wonder if that could be taken to the Supreme Court at that point. Possibly, yeah. yeah. That's well, really an interesting set of circumstances and scenarios that may um, we not may not be prepared for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even here at Talking Truth to Power, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we think about this stuff all the time. <laughs> well, so you know, uh, so we have Georgia, Wisconsin, yeah, yeah and, and, and isn't Nevada, it interesting Arizona. That, that Jefferson's uh, vote electoral votes that. Uh, put him over the top uh, were from Georgia also. Mm. Isn't that ironic? Yes. So, <laughs> uh, so the devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, you know. Stayed there, apparently. God bless Mike Pence. And we'll just have to see what, what happens on that date. Well, that's why Gomer has gone after Pence in that lawsuit. Mm-hmm. To put feet, you know, fire his feet to the fire because... Apparently, uh, Pence doesn't like the idea of being in that role. I I would imagine that a guy like Pence, he's pretty conventional. Right. That's what was great about Pence's role on the ticket, was he Mm. kind of balanced out Trump's radicalism. There was a conventionality to his personality and his his history as uh, governor of the state of Indiana. I, you know, it really will be an interesting and gutsy move for Pence... Mm-hmm. If he were to take that route, profile and courage is JFK. He once said, <laughs> "Yeah, exactly." And uh, so, right up there with Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and the founders must have considered what well, that the vice president would be one of the people that would have an interest in the counting. But mm-hmm. at any rate, the um, you know, this is not unprecedented. It's happened before in American history, but it is very unusual. I mean, we're so used to just these blah, blah conventions. Uh, you know, everybody knows who's going to be nominated, and then the inevitable election follows, except for Bush v. Gore. But that was all about one state and how they counted ballots, you know. And this is about seven states. Mm-hmm. So this is pretty, uh, pretty darn uh, unprecedented. And uh, we're just, you know, Wednesday is going to be a heck of a day. And uh, you know who has uh, already announced that he will object to the uh, certification process is um, Josh Hawley. Josh Hawley in the Senate. From Missouri. They need at least one senator. And I think they're going to have more than a handful. I think they're going to have. If he has the courage to do it, I think they'll have Rand Paul. I think they'll have uh, more than we realize at this point. Right. Because Rand Paul has been openly saying that he thinks the election was rigged, so... So our listeners should be just on the phone with us as they're watching the, the television mm-hmm. and giving us s- some clues as to what's going on <laughs> next Wednesday Yeah, for our, the next Wednesday's version of Talking Truth to Power. Or, you know, you can text 775-237-2266. You sure can. And uh, give us an update. But that, uh, So we are uh, eagerly awaiting that historical event. And... Uh, 
We wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, oh, this, do, this news is breaking as we speak. Oh, uh, yeah. Breaking news. Speaking of Mike Pence, he was, he was scheduled to go to Israel uh, on the 6th. Oh. After this, this event we're describing. And now it's been canceled. Okay. Could there be... <laughs> they're going they to <laughs> spirit him off to a bunker. So. <laughs> oh, man, this thing is really interesting, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> And uh, the thing is that the the Senate is uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, is hostile. I think to Trump's re-election. Well, I think he o- he was always hostile, and now he's just had an opportunity here to come out of his shell. Yeah, I know. He's he's uh, disagreed with Trump on foreign policy over and over again. Certainly, I think if you look up the, the definition of establishment, you'll see his picture there, yeah, right there. <laughs> And sometimes it's been good, you know, he, um, but uh, the thing is, I, uh, you know, I think he's gotten what he wanted from Trump. He got, he got all the federal judges that he blocked during right. Obama's presidency That's right. appointed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus he, he got three cherries on top with three Supreme Court nomi- uh, nominations and confirmations. Well, that was one of the incompetencies of the, the, the uh, Obama transition. They were so confident that Hillary was going to win they left all those seats open, all those judge. Well, McConnell had something to do with it. I right. mean, people don't talk about that, but right. McConnell uh, was able to block a lot of those, including Merritt Garland, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but basically, the, the theory is that McConnell no longer needs Trump, and uh, he would actually welcome a Biden presidency because he's worked with Joe Biden for mm-hmm. 40 years, yeah. and most observers would say every time he's come in contact with Joe Biden, he's picked his pockets. Right. You know, he's uh, basically beaten him on every negotiation there is. But, you know, don't ask Joe that because he'll deny it, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean what I well, say when that, I say it. Either that or he won't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a, a, a Biden administration, especially if they get at least one of the victories in, in the Georgia runoff, uh, the Republicans do. He's he's very confident that uh, Biden administration would be able to control, uh, be controlled by McConnell. So um, the Democratic victory is looking more and more like a pyrrhic victory. I mean, the the worst thing they can do is could do was win by a small margin. Now mm-hmm. the progressives have been growing. They used to be just four of them. Now there's you know, seven or eight hardcore progressives in the squad and associated with the squad. And uh, I'm not agreeing with everything that they do, but I do agree with their uh, anti-war and and um, civil liberties positions. Uh, but because the Democrats now have such a small majority in the House, you know, the, the base is already urging the progressives to start using their leverage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <In> desperation. <laughs> yeah. We may not have it two years from now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what usually happens. And what usually happens is the in, uh, the majority party in the House loses seats. Uh, he, even Reagan lost uh, something some like 20-some yeah. seats in that uh, year. And I, I don't think the Biden-Harris administration will be so dynamic that uh, <laughs> <laughs> they would overcome that historical well, fact. What makes, you, what makes you say that? <laughs> Well, virtually everything about him. (laughs) So McConnell basically has more to gain for now and for the next election in 2022 if Trump is ousted and the United GOP faces divided Democrats. I wonder what uh, McConnell's uh, reaction next Wednesday is going to be to all this. Yeah. That when That's, the turtle turtle come out of his shell again. You know he was a victim of polio. Do you know that? No, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. So I don't know how that shaped his psychology, but you know he's. Mm-hmm. So we'll be back after the break. Did you know that 4,000 years ago, the Earth's magnetic field was 5 Gauss? Over the last 165 years, scientists have measured the Earth's magnetic field and found that today it is only... 
Getting to know you. Let me tell you about America Matters with Eddie Floyd. It comes on every Monday at noon. Don't want you to miss it. That's America Matters with Eddie Floyd. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. This is your host, Brendan Trainer, and I'm here with co-host Leland Vagri. And then in the last couple of weeks, we've had some uh, drama over uh, Trump uh, vetoing bills and uh, especially the... Uh, Defense Authorization Act, mm-hmm. uh, which was, even though it looks like it's going to be overridden, uh, I can't remember any other time where especially a Republican president completely vetoed a Defense right. Authorization Act. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think it was largely Section 230. Yeah. That, that you know, and, and I'm not to blame him at all. I mean, I think that was a good reason to veto the bill, actually. Probably yeah. the best. <laughs> well, yeah, but you can't... Because of the psychological effect on the country. I think if you repeal 230, it would destroy the Internet as we know it. I don't think so. No. no I, mean, I don't think so. There's look a... look what it did when they exempted the um, the sex workers, the back page and so on. Oh, I thought you were talking about net neutrality. And I, I, I just see, I see those things as just being sort of peripheral, but... No, no, it's not net neutrality. It's fear no, of being sued. No, no. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they 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 were having it both ways though. Yes. It? So there has to be some kind of reform. Now I know Tulsi Gabbard has put in a reform, but it's it's very Jacksonian. You know, um, Alexander Hamilton. I mean, Alexander the Great, not Alexander. Alexander <laughs> Hamilton when he <laughs> conquered Iran, he came to this city where they had. The, the the city said nobody can be king unless they untie this enormous knot, which was wrapped around a, a pole or something. And so Hamilton, ju- I mean, <laughs> Alexander the Great just looked at it. Dude, I want to see pulled, Hamilton do that. <laughs> pulled out his sword and just sliced the, ne- the knot in half. And it's and that's very Jacksonian. And, you know, that's, you know, Trump, if nothing and, else. And it's compared, to, uh, Trump to is compared Jackson. to Jackson. Right. Very much so. But I mean, it's, it's like a simple answer to a complex question because because we don't want to destroy the internet, but we do want to try and get all these uh, sensors and fact checkers out of there and right. let people express their opinions. You know, I even I even got something dropped from Facebook. It was sarcasm, and the algorithm couldn't recognize it didn't, sarcasm. It didn't recognize the humor, huh? No, <laughs> it was um, it was about all the. Well, have you folk- ever seen Zuckerberg? Doesn't look like a, he no, has a funny bone he in his body. Look, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I the title of the article was "Is Russia the or Russians the stupidest people on earth?" And it was sarcasm about all the things that we blame Russia for. Uh-huh. And you know, they'd have to be stupid to do these. They just things. didn't pick up on it. No, it that's, just said you can't denigrate a a, a, a people. That's you funny. Know? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> But um, you, I don't maybe think... Maybe you should, but when you comment in, on Facebook or maybe whatever social platform you're using, maybe you should just put it in parentheses. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I mean... <laughs> Thank me later. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so, it's it's significant. I mean, it, it, it has significance that this even happened, even if they override the veto, if they haven't already. Have they overridden it? I'm not sure. If no, they I think it's it. up uh, for a vote this afternoon. Right. That's what I thought. So, yeah. So, um, you know, good good for Trump uh, because we have to take this uh, military industrial complex, give them a, a fact check on occasion. But he did say in his statement that he's doing it because... Does Mitch McConnell know that? <laughs> He did say his statement was rambling as usual, but he did say not only mentioned 230, but he did say he was being prevented from bringing the troops home from uh, Syria, Germany, and he mentioned South Korea too. I didn't even know he wanted to bring the troops home from South Korea. Yeah, it's de-emphasized, isn't it? Yeah, in the foreign policy landscape, and it's uh, just amazing what that um, that does. 
Democratic congresswoman who's a, a veteran and a double amputee. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she got she got up and said, "We're putting the troops in danger if we bring them home." <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners will have to give us a minute to to get our laughter out of because that is just one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. As she hobbled up to the left turn, right? So uh, the President Trump also pardoned the Russiagate victims like Roger Stone, George Papadopoulos, Paul Manafort, right. and that's a good thing. Right. But he also carried on his tradition of pardoning war criminals the Blackstone mercenaries that he pardoned were found guilty of massacring civilians, so mm -hmm. not really so good. Being there where they shouldn't have been, right? Is, exactly, is the problem. Yeah, they, yeah, in a in a town square or something that they massacred these people, and then he also pardoned what one writer calls several Jewish gangsters, <laughs> including Charles Kushner, who was President Jared Kushner's father. Do we have a Jews in the news segment? <laughs> no, we we could have because. <laughs> You know, they, they, what they are is they all belong to uh, the religious, the Jewish sect that the Kushners belong to, which is Chabad Livovich. Easy for you to say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this sect's leader is a reclusive rabbi who lives in New York City. But it's an Orthodox sect. It's an Orthodox sect, yeah. yeah. But it's not like Hasidim. You don't have to dress up in the clothes and mm -hmm. the funny hats and everything. So those who like the secret sect, uh, point to the, not secret, it's not secret, but they point to the fact that it runs a worldwide network of hostels and it seems to have a cheerful philosophy and, and rituals. They sing dropping. and dance and drink and yeah, so on. Yeah, they're nice people. But also, it has been <laughs> often linked to white collar crime, money laundering, and even drug running. I know. It's. Uh, the uh, So these, these people, uh, Kushner's running. father was convicted of uh, 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 landlord abuses of some kind, uh, fraud in, in landlord-related uh, events. And then there were two or three others that were convicted of defrauding the government in Medicare and Medicaid schemes. Yeah, so, but they're all pardoned. Hard now. to imagine. <laughs> but now the big question is, will he pardon Julian Assange? That is the big question. Right. Or or Snowden. He He's publicly said something about Snowden. He's said some people think he was good, and some people think he was bad, and I'm considering I it. I found it interesting that Rand Paul had suggested that Snowden be um, given uh, leniency, but nothing about Assange. Yeah, I wondered why did, that did you, is did you, f did you find that strange? Yeah, I did think about that for a minute. No reference even. No. You know? But a lot of other people, uh, maybe not in Congress... Maybe they don't. They feel constrained to do it from Congress, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, rights groups and so on that are pressuring him. And and um, you know, Snowden is healthy. I mean, he's living in Russia. He's got permanent residency now. Mm -hmm. He has a pregnant girlfriend, so he's applying for Russian citizenship. But he's he's going to be okay. Uh, but uh, Assange is in prison. His health is failing, and uh, he's. Uh, He's up for not in good shape. His yeah. extradition hearing is next week. Right. So it could be that uh, it's it's about the timing more yes. than anything. Maybe he'll wait and see what the British judge says, because it's it's mm -hmm. almost a foregone conclusion from what she's her conduct during the trial that she is going to uh, vote for extradition. But you know the thing is that Project Veritas released an audio that they discovered. Right. Of Assange talking to the State Department, the U.S. State Department, and explaining to them that there was a rogue employee who was releasing uh, sensitive emails without redacting names of agents in the field. I think it, uh, it was described actually as an, a warning from Assange to mm -hmm. the State Department. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he warned him. Mm -hmm. And he even uh, offered, he left his phone number and he offered to get together. Mm -hmm. with the representative of the State Department and go over uh, these emails with them. And uh, they never got back to him on that. But we do know now that the uh, his offer did ex does exist. And so if that, you know, since that is the case, that blows away uh, the U.S. government's 
main stated reason for Assange's uh, extradition that he deliberately and maliciously released these emails. Yeah, it's the deep state would just prefer him to die. Exactly. That's what this is. So they don't have to deal with this. They're so far into it, and it's so embarrassing to them. Yes. They will want that to be public. What's really embarrassing, I think, is not these emails, but when he released the Vault 7 mm-hmm. CIA emails that showed how the CIA could falsify... Um, the source. Sources. Yeah. Where, you know, where if they, they could claim that Russia... Uh, hack some emails be- because they um, themselves put the uh, Slavic words or the Cyrillic letters or whatever. The However other- they did it. Yeah. Yeah, it- it's very clever. And if we were to understand the extent of that complexity of giving source to someone that uh-huh. it isn't, right. um, it would blow their, probably a lot of their operation. Mm-hmm. So Blow it up. Yeah. So um, Pompeo... To put it mildly, hates Assange. Yeah. He was head of the CIA. Yeah, he was the there at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, remember, he famously... He's been kind of quiet over the past couple of weeks, hasn't mm-hmm. he? A yeah. little bit. Thank God. But he said that Assange... I've never been keen on him myself. That Assange was a non-state intelligence operation and Assange, rather than a journalist. And Assange called him... A, a state-run non-intelligence operation. <laughs> Let's take it on the road, should we? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that good. <laughs> well, excuse me, I'm getting a frog in my throat. Did you get it out of there? Yeah, I'm trying to drown it with uh, <laughs> my water bottle. So we'll 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 just have to see. Uh, like I said, hopefully he's waiting for the uh, British judge's decision this week. Yep, it's going to be interesting. I need to pay attention to my health. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. It's Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. I'm your host. And my name is Brendan Trainer. My co-host is Leland Fagri. So, uh... You had some breaking news right now that is interesting, but we don't know the details on it. Quite a bit, yeah. It's from Gateway Pundit, where else? Um, Uh The uh, Walmart has apparently slammed Holly for standing up against this election fraud that we're all experiencing. And Holly turned around and let Walmart have them. I haven't had a chance to read the article yet. And also that... uh, There's word on the Hill that Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi are possibly working on a rule change to block the Electoral College objection next Wednesday. So I'm going to be reading that as soon as this last segment (laughs) ends today. All right. And we wanted to mention a Nevada story about the Clark County student, William Clark, and his mother, Gabriella Clark, who have sued uh, the... And uh, the school that he attends in Las Vegas, uh, because of its social justice curriculum, or in other words, critical race theory, that they're pushing on the students. Right. And apparently this is a mandated course. He's a senior, and he has to take this course to graduate it. But this is a a state-funded charter school. Yeah, so it shows you charter schools can be either liberal or... Just as as worthless as any public school. Yeah, yeah. And so... um, and the teacher, his last name is Bass, he greets students in this mandatory class as, hello, my wonderful social justice warriors. Oh, my God, isn't that disgusting? <laughs> no wonder he, he cried out. <laughs> I'm on, I want out of here. <laughs> How could this be any better than a regular public school? Yeah. <laughs> students are required to name their race, gender, sexual orientation, and state whether they are the oppressors or the oppressed. Sexual orientation? Yes. 
It's insane. I know. That's, that's a definition of insanity. I know. And uh, so then they, uh, it's it's critical race, th- it's uh, Maoism, it's criticism, self-criticism, you know, it's what they used to do during the Cultural Revolution, and if you, if you gave the wrong answers, you, you know, yeah. you had to wear a dunce cap, or they tarred and feathered you, or, yep. or whatever they did during the Cultural Revolution, so... Um, it's uh, not a good thing, and we wish uh, these young men. Uh, you know what I saw? Because I saw that story. Uh, it was a television uh, segment. I think it was. I saw it on Fox. But uh, he was the only one to object. That was the only objection out of that class. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, my I have a nephew in San Diego, and he. He's no longer in school, but when he was in high school, he was always <laughs> objecting yeah. to the, to the you know the propaganda that they put down on these students. Right, but my point is, I mean, there should be an uproar about this. Right. This is this is the definition of insanity. You can't put kids through that. Do you want <laughs> them to learn or not? <laughs> yeah, they they they're learning to be submissive. Yeah. And to. Um, uh, to give up their white privilege or whatever they want to call it. And not understand anything about the foundation of the country they live in. Yes. So, I, you know, they don't teach the proper civics, and then when they do teach civics, it's this kind of Frank Frankfurt School Marxism. Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually from the Frankfurt School. <laughs> Can't make it up. No. So uh, that's why the, this uh, coming Wednesday is going to be so important, April 6th, because... Uh, We're hanging by a thread. I know. The country's hanging by a thread, and people don't realize it. They don't realize how serious it is. No. There, we have a lot of low-information voters in this country. I think it was it Reagan that said uh, we were just a generation away from authoritarianism. Right. Well, it's, it's he, a wasn't, generation. he wasn't too far off. I think no. it, at least uh, maybe two, but uh, uh-huh. yeah, it was right in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, the power of the state ratchets up in a crisis, just like Rahm Emanuel said, never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. And then uh, later on, of course, there'll be a backlash, and freedom-loving people will protest. And th- it'll get to Congress. There'll be some reduction. But there'll be some managed control of the, of yes. the discussion from right. the propaganda media. And so... And people are busy with their lives, and so they never get to the bottom of any of these stories. Right. Never. Never. And uh, there's a writer, he's retired now, Robert Higgs, from the Independent Institute in Oakland. He wrote a groundbreaking work called Crisis in Leviathan, and he went through all the crises in American history, and it's his contention that every time there's a crisis, the power of the state ratchets up, and then, like I said, they... They come back and try to bring it down, but it consolidates to a higher level than it was before right. the crisis. That is so the that's dynamic. a new reality. And, you know, this is the new reality. So if Biden is confirmed, then we're going to have an administration that's hostile to religion. It's going to be overly hostile to Russia and Russia's allies. It's, it's going to be all for the centralization of power in Washington, D.C. And I think even more important than these foreign policy designations that you describe is school choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because this is what they're going the to try and done. undo everything that Betsy DeVos did with the, in the Department of Education. Which is why they really ought to just abolish the thing if they possibly can. So, but yeah, anyway, but Reagan promised that. And yeah, do it. they always promise that. Yeah. Uh, so the school choice is going to go out the window. The first and second amendments are going to be under. You know, there's going to be a lot of bad things happening. They hate, uh, well, they I hate everything see. about the Constitution. Basically, they just right. want to shred it. Right. Exactly. You know, it doesn't matter what order or you know what uh, how how quickly they get to it or. The extent to which they eviscerate it, but that's what they're going to do. America is the last country in the world that believes in freedom over fairness. You know, we believe that the the most important thing is for the individual to be free, to make individual choices. And from those choices uh, will come a better society and not to be, to mandate fairness from the top down, which even some of our Anglo-Saxon cousins like Canada and New Zealand, you know, they've tipped more to the fairness side. So we're, 
<laughs> we're we're one of the last, you know, probably the last beacon of uh, freedom in the whole world, and they're trying to take us down too because you know all the developed countries in the world do it that way. Well, and how, look how well they got through their COVID experience. <laughs> yeah, New no. Zealand is in particular. Yeah, they're all. <laughs> They were all failed, except for very individualistic uh, Scandinavian Sweden and uh, defiant uh, uh, Slavic <laughs> Belarus, the, the only two countries that that stood up to the madness. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing. And um, They knew they had to get the herd immunity, and they knew we weren't going to get there first. Right. So <laughs> they tried it a different way. We don't need a U.N. Declaration of Human Rights to be the center point of our, you know, our lives. We need the U.S. Constitution to be restored. We need to get out of the United Nations. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if I agree with that completely, but we do need to to stop um, the spread of, uh, you know, this, un you know, Marxist, Leninist, Frankfurt School ideology. Well, you can't do it without getting out of the United Nations. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was founded by Marxists. And it was, it, its, its constitution, its conventions, were actually styled after the Soviet constitution. Did you know that? Well, they have some of the same yeah. uh, things. I mean, if you that. look at them, chart them, <coughs> you know, at, at the same time, they resemble each other. Without even reading the text. Yeah, and these these other constitutions guarantee freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and they are, they all have flowery language, yeah. and then the government just does you know the exact opposite. I'll go one step further. We'll get us out of the United Nations, and yeah. then get the United Nations out of the United States. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's more or less what I would. I and think we'll stop think, paying for it. I think there's nothing wrong with having a forum for countries to get together. As, lo as long as yeah, you but that was the ostensible purpose for the organization, and that wasn't what it was designed to do. Yeah, it was the infrastructure. It was the foundation for globalism, for a new world order in which the nation states became city councils for this grand design. Well, because that's basically yeah. what what the nation states will become should they ever uh, should they ever be enabled to create this grand design, this new world order. The United Nations will tell the states what to do. Well, the the thing that I I'm talking about here is that, you know, Putin and Russia and the uh, other countries that align with them, they believe that um, the the UN is the basis uh, for international law, and that every country should be free to to it, to establish its own sovereignty. And uh, but it's actually a prescription that will annihilate that sovereignty. Well, you know, again, it's that's, the opposite of what it pretends to be. Yeah. That, that could be. I mean, uh, the Law of the Seas Treaty. I mean, and they're using the climate change nonsense to to be invoked in this. Inst I mean, there's nothing. Handguns, you know, there's outside the, the UN is a, is a handgun with its barrel wrapped around it because it's symbolic of what they want to do. They want to eliminate the right of the individual to protect themselves against tyranny because they are the definition of tyranny. Well... You very well could be right. I think that we do need a forum for nations to get together and discuss things. And I think that the there Trump should Hotel. be a basis. <laughs> there should be a basis for uh, international order. I don't uh, international law that respects the sovereignty of all the countries involved. And you may think that that's not going to happen with the UN. No, no it's not going to. Happen. So. <laughs> But, you know, if the opposite is might versus right, which is the U.S. position with the rules-based international order, that we make the rules and we enforce them, that's not good either. Well, no. But we don't, we don't have to. Those are false choices. They don't have I hope to. So. Either of them. Right, exactly. We don't want any false choices here on Talking to the Power. Happy New Year to our yes. listeners. Happy New Year, and let's hope it brings more better news than we've been showing for the last four years. <laughs>